The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesamento. Looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. Well, boys and girls, I'm going to give you a story going back to 1949, start of the Korean War. I was there in Clinton, Indiana, living with my grandma, Grandma Pez, and I had just taken a loss in World Potato Futures. And I was really taking it bad. And she said, son, she says, you got to get used to these losses. And she said, let me show you how to do this. And so she went into the old ISA box. This is the kind you had the ice on top, and they changed it every two days. And she reached in, and she pulled out a crow that she had already uh, filleted and everything. So she put the crow into the little pan, a little bit of olive oil. She put 32 parts of garlic, six parts of onion, and a little bit of oregano, and a little bit of of a parsley and she let that simmer for about two hours she took that out put it into some aluminum foil and then much to my surprise she went out into the garden and she pulled out some cow dung that we've been using as fertilizer she took the cow dung and put it over the top of the crow wrapped it all in aluminum foil and told me to go out into the garden and bury it and so I came back in. She said, now in two days, she says, no trading. She says, when you get back, she says, we'll take care of this. So two days later, I go out. I dig up the crow. I bring it into the kitchen. I open it up. It was a terrible smell. And uh, she said, now here's how you do this. She said, you open this up. And first thing she did was she threw away the crow. She threw away the cow dung. And she says, well, okay, we're going to have some garlic and onions with some eggs. And after that, she says, you can start trading. Boys and girls, shake it off because you're going to lose a lot of times before you kiss a few princesses in this old swamp. I was wrong about the Treasury bonds and Treasury notes, folks. Even though open interest is dropping like crazy over the last two weeks, decreases all the time. Even yesterday, big decrease in Treasury bonds. Now today, we're going to see what the Treasury bond and Treasury note open interest is going to be because if this doesn't increase today with this breakout, uh, I'm going to take a nibble at it again tomorrow. Tomorrow, but not today. This is, I've learned my lesson. I'm eating the crow and moving on. Okay, let's get up here. By the way, we're going to have um, today at uh, 1220, we're going to have a special guest on uh, Basil Chapman's show. Norm Winsky is going to be on. And tomorrow, we're going to have Shane Smolian will be on. This is, uh, we're hopefully getting him on for a, uh, a regular assignment. And uh, that's what we're, we're looking for. And I want to point out today, of the uh, things here, you'll see uh, this is the DAX uh, was pointing higher. And, of course, you know, we had this explosive move, uh, you know, to the upside. We saw pretty much the same thing in the FTSE. But the really interesting one last night uh, from a trading perspective, and I happened to be up quite a bit of the time last night because uh, I had some a little tiny, tiny bit of long gold on and short euro. But I, I wanted to uh, show you the uh, the chart of the uh, the E mini S and P because it was just at the time when we were getting ready to have this announcement from uh, uh, Mario Draghi and you'll be able to see here's what happened you you were setting right at the beautiful 78 percent level and right at a 1.27 expansion uh, we were down uh, 12 points from the high and you saw that it just took off and once we took that off you know with that big wide bar that led to a, what we think is a 1.618 expansion coming in around 29.15. But that was exactly at the time. You can see that almost exactly 4 o'clock in the morning, uh, New York time, it had that big explosive move, and that's led to a, a breakout to the upside, which is not too much. Uh, you know, that's something... That you might want to look at. By the way, if you folks get a chance to listen to Basil's show today, I'm going to do a special thing on the Bradley model, uh, my experience with it, and uh, you'll, I think you'll enjoy it. It's, uh, it's a prelude to, you know, someday there might be something in the financial press about astrology and it might come from this area or not. So that's neither here nor there. Now, I did want to spend just a moment here talking about the, uh, the hog market. I want to get this up here and take a look at it here. This is from uh, 
Jim Long. He's with the Pork Commentary for Genesis Incorporated, and he's saying about how the hog market disappoints. Folks, this is in the midst of a terrible disease going over in China, and hogs have dropped uh, you know, 53% in the last uh, five weeks after the top was made. I bring this to your attention because the news follows the trend. The news is now just catching up to it. Hello. You know, give me a break. But hogs have reached some pretty good uh, support, in my opinion, and we'll see whether that's going uh, to be the case or not. Um, Mike is talking about platinum. Uh, the uh, platinum, we got down to 790 last night. I was looking for that area around 780. We didn't quite get there. And then the Draghi thing came out, and the markets rallied $15, $16. And we'll see what happens. But uh, these are announcement things, very, very emotional stuff. So I think it's very important that we would be watching, you know, what was happening. Here's what I was watching last night, well, along with the the S and P. It's when that thing came out. You'll notice here's where we were with the uh, uh, the euro. We were it looked like we were getting ready to make another 15 pips higher, and then exactly at four o'clock. The bottom fell out of this, and it just dropped like a rock down to 11.88. And now the euro's uh, below that 11. If it closes below 11.80 today, folks, uh, that sets up a breakout of that 1.618 expansion that we had looked at many times before. I'll get this up here, and you'll be able to see it here. If we could get down, it's, excuse me, I mean 10.88, not 11.88. Give me one second here to take a look at it. We'll bring it up here. Here's the euro. Uh, we're trading around 112 um, even right now. We got down to 111.88 just a little bit earlier. Uh, and so it does appear that if we get below 110.80, uh, we're, we're going to be looking, uh, I believe, at 107 or, or lower. Remember, the long-term picture in the euro is really nasty. I mean, let's just get this, uh, put this up and take a look at it. You'll be able to see this is where we're going. Yeah, Super Mario is the trade name. Helicopter Ben, Super Mario, they got all these wonderful nicknames. Anyway, you can see here the small ABC on this takes it to 110, and the larger ABCD takes it to 105. So those are in the cards, but we are trading below the 61% retracement now, and we've been here. We've been here for nine weeks, and this is the third time that we popped above it and then went below it. So it's still heading down. There's no question about it. So the dollar is strong, and it looks like it could get even stronger. We'll have to do one thing at a time as we as we look at some of these. So let's play. Oh, by the way, we, that's very good, Terry. Thank you for bringing that. It's one of the subjects I want to cover, and that is that F Facebook is coming out with a cryptocurrency, and that's causing the old bit to take a, uh, a big jump. Uh, as you know here, we've been looking at this uh, since that ABCD pattern had formed down there at the uh, 30, uh, the, actually 3,700 was the ABCD. The low was at uh, 3,200. Then we had that Gartley down there in the middle of um, uh, in the middle of March, and then from there we've had this heck of a run. Now we've got an ABCD structure that takes it to 10,500. I don't know where it's trading right now, but it might even be there already because with the news coming out about Facebook getting into cryptocurrencies, that's going to put sort of a uh, proverbial. Uh, a little bit of a, uh, what do you call it, uh, a blessing would be my guess. So we'll see. Uh, could someone let me know what the what Bitcoin is trading at? Because I have no way of checking that stuff this early in the morning. We're coming up to our first break, 877-927-6648. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. 
The TAS Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of TAS Market Profile, the TAS Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien have just announced a special webinar on June 19th for all subscribers to the TAS Profile Scanner. Steve and Tom will break down the trade matrix, market breadth, heat grid, as well as the three-step process you can use with the TAS Profile Scanner to identify market movers and how to capitalize on that move. For all the details and to get started with the TAS Profile Scanner today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. With a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. Go sign up today. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, back folks. And uh, I wanted to post the chart uh, of the uh, DAX index, of course. And then also I want to do the chart uh, of the gold because uh, if we get, you notice they're talking about this candlestick, the, the, the shooting star. That shooting star has been shot out of the sky, folks. We backed off $20 and we're right back there to the 78% level, 1358. That's not a shooting star when you see something like that. A shooting star just starts lower and keeps going. So that's what do we possibly could be looking at uh, at this particular point. We have a shooting star possibly in July wheat, but certainly not in the gold contract. That's my opinion. Remember, the possibility exists, and uh, with Tudor Jones on the bullish side of this, it's not going to be many bearish. And we think that once we get above 1375, uh, taking out all those highs going back to 2016, boy, that's a really bullish factor here. The gentleman that did this trending channel, trading channel saying doesn't look at ABCDs, but the ABCD structure on this takes you to $1,500 without any trouble at all. And believe me, between 1375 and 1500 is only is only it's not very far, folks. You know, you're talking about uh, what 200, 175 dollars. We've seen gold run, you know, 100 dollars during 2016, 120 dollars. So it's not a, it's not uh, unusual to see that happen because if in fact this zero interest rates is coming. And, uh, boy, I don't understand it. But if it's coming, like all the big boys say it is, it's going to be really interesting. But I will be watching that open interest tonight. And if there's a big drop in open interest today in uh, Treasury notes and Treasury bonds, uh, the big boys uh, better have their pants on because uh, <laughs> it's a big boy pants trade. And if it doesn't keep going, where are the buyers going to come from if open interest drops? It's like open, you know, if you have a if you have a haberdashery shop and you don't have any ties for sale and people want to buy ties, you can't sell ties. So anyway, 
let's just uh, remember what happens. Anyway, wrong today, looking at it tomorrow. Uh, another one that we really need to watch, of course, today will be the utility index because we are really approaching another three drive pattern up here uh, in the utility up around that 830 level. I don't know where that's going to be, but uh, we've broken out, of course, of that real key level in the um, notes, excuse me, in the S&P 500. Uh, uh, we, we've touched that old high again. So that we haven't made contract highs, but we've touched that old high again. But this is a lot of emotionalism today, folks. So let's remind ourselves that uh, that's uh, something that we we should really uh, pay close attention. Now, there's a chart from uh, uh, one of our uh, friends from uh, the broker tech over at Benchmark Securities that sent that's very interesting. This is about the Fed, and it shows uh, – Shane Smolian will talk about more about this tomorrow. But, see, the market is leading the Fed. You can see that the market is actually – Pre preempting what the Fed is going to do at this particular thing. Now, I wanted to post another chart from Shane Smolian that will be on tomorrow that will talk about it. And this was sent to me, folks, yesterday afternoon, right after the mar right before the market closed. He uh, sent, in fact, it was right when I was on Basil's show between 12 and 1. And he said that, you know, this had a really bullish phenomenon here based on what they were doing with the Fed juice. And he was certainly right. And he'll be on telling us more about this. Uh, tomorrow at uh, 9.30 here on my show. So let's uh, try to stay tuned for that. He seems to know what he's doing, and that's the main thing that uh, you want to keep uh, reminding of uh, what you're looking at. Okay, let's move on here uh, to another question that someone had, and that's about Facebook and the cryptocurrencies. Folks, I don't know anything about the cryptocurrencies. All I know is that Facebook has been one of the stronger of the FANG stocks uh, all along, whether anybody knew anything about it or not, you know, I really don't know. But all I can tell you is give me a second here and I'll get it up here to take a look at it. You'll see we're trading up into the 190 area now with uh, with Facebook without any trouble at all, I believe, or 192 or something like that. I don't know what the last price on Facebook is, but I think it's above the 78% level at uh, 189 already. So it's been one of the stronger of the uh, of the stock so we'll we'll have to see if that's going to be the case um you know what i'd like to do this i worked really hard to get this thing ready for the show for basil but i i wanted to show you um this is the real this is the bradley uh this was the key thing for me this was a uh, right out of bradley's book from 1947 he wrote this uh book in 1946 Okay, see, it's way above there. See, thanks, Terry. It's 189 was the 786, and we blasted through that. Look, this is the siderograph. I'll cover that at the, uh, at the at the Basel show at noon. But this basically is that Bradley line, is the the Bradley index. You can see. Uh, I'll explain what the serial potential is later. But the, the, you can see the Dow Jones Industrial. It to, it topped in late May. Uh, actually, uh, the, the Bradley was due to top in early June, and you can see it went down. Followed it relatively well. He published this to Llewellyn Publications, 1947. No one ever did another year on this that I could find, and I really looked for it, because it was 40 years later, 1986, when I was with Dr. Miller in, uh, down in uh, Sarasota, Florida, working on the book, uh, Astro Cycles of Traders Viewpoint, and we brought 20 men and Neil Michelson from Astro Computing into it, and we started to run old years of the uh, Bradley model to see how accurate it really was. And it really does have some really amazing statistics. But I wanted to show you where these numbers come from later uh, later this afternoon. And then if you like, if those folks like it, then I'll do another segment with you guys a little bit later. But I know most of you are interested more about the same old thing, nothing but the charts and nothing but the charts. If we look at this uh, E-mini, I want to bring this up to your attention here because uh, we have not made new contract highs, even though we blasted through the 78% level this morning uh, without, with ease, uh, with all this news that's out here. And the old high, up, of course, is there at 29.50. That's a long way away. And with a news-related market that we're seeing today, anything can happen, and it usually does. So let's pay uh, close attention to it. Uh, someone, someone just asked me a question. Why was I up uh, last night, uh, you know, looking at things? Well, there was a few things on my on my plate that looked really interesting that uh, turned out okay. I'll show you one of them is uh, – 
I had been bearish the euro for quite some time, and uh, my AI program had a really interesting turn right about the time when Draghi was coming on, which had a negative bias to it, and it uh, made a couple of bucks. But anyway, let's uh, let's talk a little bit uh, about the corn market. We've had a uh, uh, yesterday was the full moon. Uh, we had a little bit of reversal in corn, and the, the pundits today are saying it's going to take a lot of warm, dry weather to keep corn from going lower. And I have to agree with that 100%. Now wheat has backed off uh, 25 cents from its high, and uh, that that was the weaker of the complex. So and the soybeans were still strong. They backed off a little bit. It's all very quiet this morning, waiting for another weather report you know, to come true with it. So we'll do this. What we're going to do now is we've got a break coming up. And when we come back, I want to talk a little bit about um, real aggressive trading and uh, some of the things that you have to do if you're going to be an aggressive trader. This comes from my friend Tom Hugard, and we will uh, talk about that when we get back from the break. So uh, take a moment here to thank everybody for what they're doing. Oh, by the way, anybody that wants the Bradley book, uh, I offer it for 25 bucks. Uh, they're on the internet for 70 to $170. I'll, if, and I donate the money. Uh, just send me an email that you want to get the book. I'll send you an in invoice, 25 bucks. We're going to send it to the Gospel Mission Tucson, Arizona for White Sox. 877-927-6648. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of tfnn.com under trading newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Okay, folks, I've just been alerted that some of the folks here are angry that I'm not going to do the show about the Bradley this morning in my own show, so I'm going to do it. I'm going to repeat it because I think it's worth it. It's I like doing it anyway. And since it's my show, that's what I'm going to do. All right, let's take a look at this Sidera graph again. I'm going to try to explain to you what this is. This line that you see where it says sidereal potential, okay, that is a Sidera graph. A Sidera graph is a combination clock of navigation device that keeps the sidereal time of the Greenwich median of longitude. Now, boy, anybody from Terre Haute, Indiana that doesn't know that is really in trouble. But that's what that whole book was about. And anyway, that's I got this book, and we ran these things, and it really had something going for it. And here's, here's what it's really based on. I'm just going to bring it. This is page 26. It's going to show you the valency or the strength of these particular things. And uh, you'll you'll notice what it is. It's done by a, an astrophysicist and a guy is from uh, Yale University, Dr. H. S. Burr, and he termed the potential and highly adaptable play studies of lunar effects. And this is how, in other words, if you look at the left, uh, the um, the x and y axis, it gave it a positive or negative or a neutral, and so that gave it a weight. Now, some people, what they do with the Bradley model is they give various weights, and it comes up with a whole bunch of various stuff. And I don't, I, you know, I, that's beyond my pay grade. If here's here's a perfect example. Here's a Sidera graph from someone I don't know. I pulled it off the internet last night while I was watching uh, all the stuff going on in Europe. But you notice the dates up there, June 4th. You know, we were looking at June 6th. Uh, we're looking at August 28th, not August the 8th. And if you look at his graph down there, you can see that August 25th is where it comes in. You know, right there at the high, if it's in, if it's in effect or not. And then look at the October, November, and we know all the history of the lows that are made in October, November. Whether that means anything or not, I don't know. But people can change those those weights on those things, and that'll change the whole thing. Mine is done exactly like Bradley said it was, and all I do is look at those those key dates. It had a whole bunch of stuff that was what I think rather rather important. And one of the things was how to uh, you know, and, and Bill Meridian has has covered this, and and as has um, Norm Winsky. Uh, if you look at this, you'll notice this is a uh, chart that shows you know the bell shape curved and it shows as an aspect approaches how it uh, you know the the approaching and then leaving how the power changes and that's why uh, you have to be really watching these things right to the minute and that's what that's what one of the things that norm does so anyway those are just a few of the things uh, uh, and that's the main thing but let me let me explain to you uh, oh here's really an important one here Jack golly gee Larry hold it let's put the old uh, thinking cap on here. This was one of my favorites right here. This is uh, from 1898 to 1947. What he observed was that this Venus-Uranus cycle that you can see there, the first one is a conjunction, the next one is a trine, uh, then the next one was a, a, con a conjunction and a square. Squares and trines are 90 degrees, squares are 90, trines are 180, but uh, excuse me, uh, 90, and then the uh, opposition is 180, so you got all of those there, but shows that when you get those Venus aspects on those dates, really high probability of a turn in, in the stock market. And the reason why is there are 233 days in the Venus Uranus cycle. Well, Venus uh, cycle to the Earth is 225 into uh, 356. 0.618 of a year. So that's why uh, we, we looked at that. And it's pretty good. It, it, and I think uh, Steve Rhodes does quite a bit of work on that uh, to this day. So that's another one. And here's where uh, this, was, this was the big turning point for me, folks. Uh, I'm going to have to explain to this because I, went, I did so many years on this. But this is a, a transit chart just showing you where the planets are in the sky, like if you were doing a birth chart, this is the time you were born. But here is March the 5th, 2009. If you notice all these planets lined up in, in two houses, I mean, my goodness, that's just a tremendous amount of stuff going on in one particular area of, the, of this uh, transit chart. I, I don't know exactly what it means. All I know is when you see this, boy, pay really close attention to it because it's, uh, it really means a lot. So what happened on March the 9th of 2009? If we pick up the chart, this is from the newsletter that day coming into this week, and I said that we were going to be looking at the largest rally in the stock market since 1938. I certainly got that one wrong because it's still rallying. But anyway, that was the low. You can see the three drive to a bottom pattern. 
It's a perfect ABCD. The Dow was trading at 64.40, um, I believe, that day. And from there, we took off, and we never looked back. And it was, uh, you know, a big move. You'll notice the two Gartley patterns that were there. Um, the little white triangles that are there, very close to Bradley turning dates, and that was in the move down. And uh, during that move from uh, September uh, into uh, late October, early November, uh, was really a really happy time because uh, it happened to be short most of the time, and it was uh, it was a nice run. Boy, I tell you though, when the bottom was made down there, you couldn't find anybody to buy anything. <laughs> they had to so Goldman Sachs had to go to Warren Buffett to get money. So that could be a thing. Yep, it was a generational change. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see whether that means anything or not. But uh, those are the things that you look for when you're watching these, because these are just cycles that you're looking at. And Bradley, you know, did this. He, you know, he never wrote another book. He never published another paper. You know, I looked for everywhere trying to find the Bradley model where people had done things with it. Nobody did. And uh, that's when I wrote the book, uh, Astro Cycles, A Trader's Viewpoint. And then I had the, the Bradley model done. And so I started a newsletter called Astro Cycles, The Trader's uh, Astro Cycles Newsletter. And it, boy, I had a lot of people uh, doing it. I just got tired writing it after four or five years. I mean, it's, uh, it, it's a really hassle. This was before the Internet. I had to take that stuff in to be printed and, uh, and all kinds. Of, I'll tell you a great story. I, I had a, a big date that I really liked. It wasn't, the Octo it wasn't November of uh, 89. It was something else. You type is out broadsword to Danny boy, broadsword to Danny boy. Come in, Danny boy, Danny boy, Danny boy, broadsword to Danny boy. The chicken is in the pot, the crow has landed, the crow has landed. I wish I wouldn't do it either, Al, but there's nothing I can do about it. Call Mr. Skype. And anyway, uh, I had this letter to go out, and I take I was always done by the folks in San Luis Obispo, the handicapped folks. They hand addressed everything, and what happened was it was just sitting there. No one took it to the post office. And instead of making, you know, looking really bad, here I had this letter that didn't even have postage on it, and all I had to do was make a few changes and uh, send it back out. So sometimes I was protected by that, but uh, seeing is what's going on. But anyway, we've got a break coming up here to protect you guys against me any further, and I'll have another taste of the garlic and onion. Uh, Anyway, let's just move on to the next one and uh, see what happens uh, to the next part of this. We'll see what the markets are doing this morning, and we'll double-check to see what's, uh, what's going on. By the way, my AI program is saying that we're going to start higher and go lower in stocks, but whether that's right or not, yeah. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. 
It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South Africa, African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, next on TFNN. Okay, we're back, folks, and uh, I wanted to, uh, I posted the chart of what the prediction is supposed to be for the day from our good friend over in Lost Wages, Mr. TB. Uh, okay, always interested. You'll notice that it should have a lower close than where we're trading right now, whether that's going to be the case or not. You can see the times there yourself and use it at your own risk because, believe me, folks, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Let me give you an example, uh, one that it doesn't. Here is the report. This is what was happening right at 4 o'clock in the morning. You can see it was forecasting to be a big move up here and then a big move down. Well, the big move down didn't come. It just kept going higher and higher and higher. So sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. So, oh, President Trump just had a great conversation with President Xi of China. Extended next week in G20 and they're going to solve all the problems of the world. How nice. Now, the next tweet will be something else, but we'll see. Folks, one of the currencies that we're watching really closely is this Australian dollar because we are breaking down now on really, um, really key levels here. You can see here uh, we're breaking below those double that support level, and we're heading towards this double bottom down around 6,700. Uh, in this, so let's uh, you know kind of uh, keep a uh, keep a close eye on it. Well, what happened to gold? Son of a gun! Look like it. So look at the S and P. Shut the front door and raise the rent. We are moving like jabezies. They must have dropped rates again. Holy cow! That's a good one. This is good. And oh, the bonds. My goodness, what's going on here? We're having lots of action, and I'm on a TV show or a radio show. What am I going to do here? Okay, let's move on. I don't know. We'll see what happens here. We'll do one thing or now. I'll just show you this just be, just to tell you. I'm losing. I'm losing um, uh, stuff to talk about on the show, folks. I really am. So I'll talk about the things that I like the best. So I'm going to show you the forecast that I was looking at here in the bonds. We'll bring this up here, and you'll see here it's looking for a move down. By golly, we got that. That's a good one. So let's take a quick look here at the gold to see if that said anything. Let's just look here. Here's the gold. Let's get that one up here and see if that did anything. Hmm. That's pretty good. I'm thinking maybe I should put this out for my subscribers every day and let the folks look at it and then see what's going on. And we were looking for an up move in stocks right about now. I think that's what we just posted just a few minutes ago. We got that. So, well, that's three for three. That's not so bad, you know. You got to pick up a, oh, maybe we'll have a chance to eat some more crow a little later. But between that time at lunch, I'm going to have some escargot since I'm in the mood for garlic today. 
I better get some new material. Where's Norm Winsky when I need him? Let's move on here to the next one that I wanted to cover. I want to um, mention to you folks uh, the importance of what is happening today in notes and bonds. I, I'm an old timer, boys and girls. I, I only know one thing, pattern recognition. And all I do know is that if this treasury bonds and treasury notes have a big drop in open interest today, the big boys, uh, they better be wearing suspenders because they got their big boy pants on. And uh, if it doesn't work that the way they think it is, uh, be careful. That's the main thing to uh, you know pay sort of attention to. Someone asked me the uh, explanation about what it means on a sidereograph. Folks, I read it to you. I don't know what it means. I'm not an astrologer. You know, I look at bar charts and patterns. You know, I let other people try to tell me what that is. Uh, Twentyman knows what it is, and uh, he spent a lot of time looking at it. We did do all those years from, um, I believe it was 1903 all the way through 1980, uh, 1987. We did it all, and you, you know, we got we published a lot of them. But sometimes it's perfect, and sometimes it isn't. But uh, the dates are pretty good. But there's something there. I don't know what the answer to it is. I'm not sure. Someone's asked a question about the corn market. I wanted to give you uh, just give you an idea. We talked about this last week when we had Mr. Z on the line here from the Tiger Den. If you remember here, we were looking at this long-term weekly chart on corn. You notice that uh, 477 was a big spot, and we hit uh, Dees corn yesterday uh, got right up there, 477. It's backed off a little bit from that level, but it's still early. You know, we don't know. We'll see if it's going to be, uh, uh, you know, whether that's going to work or not. So we'll have to wait and see. The key today for me is to look at that open interest in treasury bonds and treasury notes because if it drops big, and if it drops big, we got there's a big trouble out there. I mean, because you're not having people coming into your marketplace to buy it. It's just like opening a store. If you don't have any inventory, you can't sell anything. And that's what's happening. If if you buy one and sell the other, you got zero. So if this thing keeps dropping, there's no new buyers coming in to support the market. If this is a big run today with a drop in open interest, that means that's all short covering. There are no new buyers coming in. And when all the shorts are done covering, you look out the airline window and say, look out below, because that's what's going to be happening. Uh, here, uh, David David White's got a great comment. Being long U.S. Treasuries and now the world's most crowded trade, replacing U.S. tech stocks. I have to agree with you, my friend, and uh, I nibble at it. You know, sometimes you get right, sometimes you get wrong. I took a few hits at it, but um, last night when we went, a one, went above 155.03, I figured there was something big happening and there's going to be some other stuff uh, dropping it. But if we don't have something really good news on this open interest thing tomorrow, uh, that's not going to be good. And you can do that yourself. Go to www.cme. Whoa, an earthquake in Japan. Oh, dear. Not a tsunami. Oh, that's not good. Uh, go to www.cme.com. Click on data. Move over to interest rates and voila. Bada bing, bada boom, it's right there in front of you. It makes it real easy. So there's a pretty good earthquake over there. I've been in quite a few earthquakes living in California, but um, uh, nothing scares me as much as being in Terre Haute, Indiana during the tornadoes back in the early 1950s. Those were, those were really devastating. That's not the kind of thing that you want to look at. Let me review what these markets are doing because we're having a lot of uh, – a lot of activity. We dropped a full point in bonds. We've dropped $11 in gold. We moved another $10, $15 higher in the S&P. Uh, interesting one to look at, folks, if you're trading the grains. Uh, watch the uh, watch a Christmas or a July wheat up here at 533, 534. That's a 38% uh, retracement, and sometimes 38% retracements can be really interesting for low-risk selling opportunities if you have a uh, have a situation like that. Uh, looking at oh wow, I see something triggered here. Hold on just a second, just a second. My alert went off, and I didn't get the uh, didn't get a chance. So bear with me here. It's going to be really interesting. There we go. Boy, oh, boy, we hit it spot on. Doggone it. Here's the Japanese yen, folks. Just hit it just a little while ago, right at that 10, right just a tad at one, just a tad below the 108. And uh, whether that's going to be it or not, we'll have to wait and see because there might be a big change here coming in some of these things. So pay attention. Could be very, very interesting. No question about it, as it always is.
If you have any questions, it's 877-927-6648. I'll be doing Basil Chapman's show at noon, and we will be having Norm Winsky as our guest at uh, 20 minutes after the hour. Norm's going to talk to us about some key times, and he's been pretty spot on about some of these things. And with the action that we're having today, might be helpful, might be helpful. So we'll keep a close eye on it. As far as another question about Bitcoin, I have no idea where it's going, folks. It just looks like it wants to go higher. The price objective is around 10500 We're trading around 9200 right now. I haven't heard any news about the Facebook thing, but we'll have to wait and see. So 877-927-6648. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 six and three months timer digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well the fact is markets can be timed and i'll teach you the exact set of tools that i use that is transforming into one of the best at what i do sign up for mastering probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where i take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. sign up today if you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Just in the second most popular one, which is the Treasury bonds. You'll notice that the high today was an exact 1.27 expansion of that move. I said in my newsletter, if we get above 127.31, this market was probably going to go straight up. We haven't got there yet. And I don't know if this means anything or not, but I do know this. 
that if interest rate, if this open interest has dropped uh, tomorrow, when we look at this, um, you can just put your dancing shoes on and get ready to tap the heads of a few bulls because they're going to get their little uh, kabuki whopped. That's uh, this is not good because if you don't, people have taken the other side of the market. It only has one way to go, and that's down. We've seen this before. We've seen it in gold, and we've seen it in crude oil. I've, I've you know, showed many examples of that. So let's let's really watch this. That's the real key today of all the stuff that's going on. Where are the players coming from? That's what I'd like to see. The other question is, we get gold right up to the 78% level there at 1357, and all of a sudden it drops $10 with all this bullish news. Hello, Federal. Let's pay attention to that one, too. The news is not doing well. Now, we had a big run-up in stocks, and uh, I really like that. We'll see whether that's going to happen, anything or not, but we'll wait and see. All right, let's uh, let's move on here. We got another uh, – oh, tomorrow Tomorrow we will have uh, – Shane Smullyan is our guest on a regular half-hour show. Uh, we're going to have him on for quite a while. He's got some really great stuff uh, about his new Twitter service along with this Fed stuff with the with – the, um, uh, Fed juice and stuff, and as you can see from that first chart that I uh, posted, you will be able to see. Yes, Terry, I did close the bond trade. The note trade had a stop at 31. That still, that was still valid. But I got out of the bonds at 05. That took a, that was a $600 loss, and uh, so we'll, you know, that that's neither here nor there. Okay, that's what that's what the crow was all about. But the notes didn't get to that level, and I. Well, anyway, 877-927-6648. Stay tuned for Tom O'Brien.